Okay. What is n? Number of moles. So if you take n over v, which equal to p over r t, n over v is c. So that's why whenever you have gas or vapor, it is more convenient to use molar basis because you can convert it directly to pressure and temperature using ideal gas law. Also, whenever you have chemical reaction in the system, it is more convenient to use molar basis as well because chemical reaction is represented according to stoichiometry ratio and stoichiometry ratio is represented in terms of mole, not mass. So it's more convenient to use molar basis with the system which has a chemical reaction. Okay? On the other hand, for mass basis, it is more convenient for us to use mass basis especially in derivation of the formula because mass is conserved. Mass cannot be gained or mass cannot be lost because according to the first law, not, not first law, according to principle of calculation, mass in is supposed to equal to mass out or mass before reaction and mass after reaction is supposed to be the same. So it is easier to derive equation based on mass because you do not have generation of mass. On the other hand, mole itself is not conserved. You can create no more number of moles. So that, in that sense, it's a little bit difficult. So whenever you have system that you consider overall change, mass basis is more convenient. All right? Okay, so now let's turn our attention to this picture. Suppose I have a screen with a unit area, one unit area here, and this screen is placed in a fluid. There will be flow of molecules passed through this screen. Okay, you have molecules passing through. Of course, molecule itself can move in any direction in three dimension. But if you consider the direction that is perpendicular to this screen, okay, and then you take or you monitor how many molecules pass through this screen. You see that the number that you count how many molecules that pass through the screen within the period of time depends on two things. First, it depends on how fast the molecules here move. If in general the molecule move very fast, the chance would be within the time period you, you will see a lot of molecules passing through this screen, right? Or you may have a lot of molecules. If you have a lot of molecules, again, you get a lot of molecules passing through the screen. All right? Now, if you look into the motion of the molecule passing through the screen, perpendicular to the screen, what does it tell you? If you count mass of the molecules that pass through the screen per unit area, per unit time, what is it? It's a mass flux, right? It is a mass flux. And the mass flux here, so let's say this is mass flux. So mass flux would be the mass of molecule passing through the screen here within the period of time within the unit area here. It, as I said, it depends on how much or how many molecules you have and how fast they are. So it depends on two things, concentration and velocity. Okay? If you look into the unit, Unit of rho here is kilogram per cubic meter. 
unit of velocity is meter per second. As a result, you get the unit, the combined unit of kilogram per square meter per second, which is directly unit of mass flux. You should also notice that meter cube here is a volume. As I draw earlier, you have volume. This is meter, meter, and meter here. Right? The cube here. If you take one meter out, this meter is meter in this direction. Because right now we look for the velocity perpendicular to our screen here. That velocity has unit of meter per second. That meter is supposed to be meter perpendicular to the screen. Okay? So this meter and that meter cancel out. So at the end you will get kilogram of mass passing through the screen per unit area of the screen per second which is a mass flux. Okay? So, if you consider, suppose my molecules here is molecules of A. And you count only molecules of A. The density or the concentration of A is represented by rho A. The velocity would be velocity of its own molecules, so velocity of A. So when they combine together, the mass flux that you observe would be mass flux of A. Okay? So I can write down mass flux of species A equal to rho A V A. On the other hand, if you have more than one species, if you have B as well, B also move. In this scenario or in this situation, you have two species. If you selectively count blue molecules, count only A molecule that pass through the screen, you get this equation. So you use concentration of A and you use velocity of A. What the result would be, it would be mass flux of A. On the other hand, if you use rho B and multiply by its own velocity, you get mass flux of B. Right? Now, if you disregard color or disregard type of molecules, you just count how many balls pass through this screen. That means you look for the overall mixture, not one particular species. In that case, density that you use should be total density, not density of specific species. In that case, you use rho, total density, multiplied by velocity of the whole mixture. That would be average velocity of the mixture, V. Right? So this is vector. So what is this term represent? It would be a mass flux of all species. Combine. Okay? Similarly, if you change how you count, instead of counting mass passing through the screen, you change to count how many moles that pass through the screen. Again, you can get what we call molar flux. Molar flux of A should depends on concentration and its own velocity. 
Concentration in this case is represented in mole basis, so we use CA. But velocity will still be the same. So VA here and VA over there are the same number. Okay? Or you can calculate molar flux of all species combined to be total molar concentration multiplied by average velocity. But this average velocity can no longer be V because this V here is average velocity based on mass basis is calculated based on using mass fraction. In terms of molar basis, the average velocity here is supposed to be calculated using molar basis. So instead of using V, we must use V star. Okay? So here will be V star. Any question? Now, in general, you can have mass transport, which is equal to by molecular transport which sometimes is called diffusion. plus by convective transport sometimes it's, it is called bulk flow okay diffusion itself is represented by mass flux j of species that you are interested in so if I'm consider species A, mass flux by diffusion is JA. Of course, JA in general can be calculated based on relative velocity of species of your interest subtracted by average velocity of the mixture. Again, this equation can be applied no matter how many species you have in the system. And this average velocity is supposed to be calculated based on mass basis. But if your system is binary, then you can say that JA can also be represented using fixed law. And fixed law is minus rho DAB del omega a. Okay? The other part, the bulk flow part, we have not talked about that yet. So let's talk about it. <coughs> 